God, good evening. Quiniche, heal me, Lord. Hey, Dailies, welcome. He's a wonder. Come on in. Good God evening. Sure, I don't know why you're asking me that, but sure. Lily Shaw, good evening. Hello, Jeanette Robinson. Katharina, welcome. Ooh, we got different pictures now when y'all show up. Crystal Adgers, Minister Crystal Adgers, Minister Jackie. Lisa Vidro, good evening. Sure, thank you. Just as long as you have the dip sauce to go with them. Ebony, Jazz Kenny, Glory888. Hi, Natasha. Good evening. Hi, Ebony. Oh, let me say it right. Ebony. Thank you, Integrity Force. She's inviting followers. Welcome. Good evening. Hi, Anya. Happy early birthday. Come on, while we're coming, aw, thank you. <laughs> while we're coming in, we're going to take a moment and wish Anya a happy birthday. Tomorrow is officially her birthday. And, you know, I've got to do it while I can remember it because tomorrow night I may completely forget. So we'll do it ahead of time. Godspeed. Happy birthday, Anya. Hola, Misha. Hola, Integrity Force. Happy birthday, Anya. Aw, oh, they saying you rock. Go on, Jackie Minion. 2018 Soul Detox Delegates. We've got some alumni on here. Jackie is an alumni, I believe, from 2017. Good evening, Minister Cherie. Come on, Periscope shot right up. Facebook is taking so long. <laughs> That's right. Happy birthday, Anya. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Anya. Hanya, Honya, how else I call you? Happy birthday to you. You're wonderful. You helped make this thing great. Hi, Rochelle. Good evening, family. Because Periscope is where it's all at, huh? Y'all are something else with Periscope. Ebony, I'm coming for the praise team. Don't worry about it. Don't sleep on me. CW, Delia, come on, Facebook. Where y'all at? I have never seen such low low um, audience numbers on Facebook ever. But Periscope be popping. Oh, look at the cake. Hello, Deborah Holloman. Good evening. Okita, good evening. Let's go. VIP seat over here, huh? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. 9.05, we're going to get ready to go. Get Zoom in here. Come on in. Come on in, come on in, let's go. Hello, Hemp Care. Yes, he's a wonder. Very good. Still buffering on Facebook, huh? Wow. Well, I didn't use my Switcher app. This time I'm coming directly from the phone, so at least I know it's not Switcher, so I'll keep that product. Best seat in the house. Who's going to brag about the best seat in the house? We didn't have to go out in this cold. My husband and I went for date night for a little bit tonight. And um, it's freezing out. And I'm like, who wants to be out on a night like this? First super hard. Thank you, Misha. Go ahead. CW says she's versatile. It's good on your end? Good. Very good. Eagle Vision, good evening. Mike Tate, good evening. Hey, Dr. Oaf.
Lady Latanya, I was waiting for you. Come on, I didn't want to get started without you. Good evening, I see you, Rhonda West. 52 degrees there, huh? No, we ain't kicking that. Yeah, we're going to have to stick with this one, and then we'll move into that one. Come on in, where the table is spread, and the feast of the Lord's going on. Welcome, Tucker family. Maxine, welcome. I don't know what be going on with Facebook. It's weird. Facebook been like 60, 80, and we can't get it up over 13 right now. Oh, yeah? Mm, looks good here. Looks good here. No, I think you're stuck. What keeps kicking you out, anointed for service? All right. It's fine on your end? Good. Absolutely. Share with your followers. Let's get the numbers up on Facebook side. We've got to get this message out. This is a message that the enemy and his kingdom definitely does not want out. Brandell, look whose name pops right up on my screen. All right, Minister Kareem. Good. Share it with your followers so we can get started. Just know that sometimes sharing also makes it slow down and freeze and buffer and all of that. But it will grow with us. We've had to grow and it will grow with us. Good evening, Diane Collins. Write the vision. <laughs> Thank you, Lily Shaw, for the super heart. All right, Maxine. I like that. Maxine 0130. Amen. It has to be done. Trish Morris, good evening. One of our deliverance doctors in the house. I saw um, Mr. Lisa come in. I don't know if I saw Minister Joy yet. But, um... They should be on here because they go into all the deliverance sessions with me. So they need to be on here. I don't want to have to kick them out like Facebook does. Uh-oh, share the dream. Email me. I'll start out with that. Our um, website address is www.suzannemhoward.com. I am asking, pleading that you download the app. That you download the app um, from your Google uh, or um, iTunes section and go into your app section and down, download what's called My Church Apps. My Church Apps. And then from there, um, you'll put in the search bar, Soul Detox, and then you will have the app on your phone. It has a very private, personal, and confidential journal that will be all yours. Um, Nobody can see it and read it unless you share it with them. And let's see what else. March 3rd, we have our um, breakfast going on. Breakfast, um, we have, we're going to have prayer and praise. We're going to have um, a live recording of Soul Detox. You'll be my live studio audience. And as always, there's gifts and giveaways and everything else going on. We just make it a wonderful, wonderful time for all of our delegates to come together every three months. Delegates, you're allowed to bring in some guests with you. We've... Um, always over fulfilled overfilled our capacity we had a capacity of 100 we're always hitting 125 this time i believe the place is double if seats 250 it's free to get in um it's free to eat we're just praying that um by the move of god that you will be touched in your heart to um sow whatever is in your heart before you leave but everything's free 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 if you don't have you don't have to worry about it for those who do have they will make up for you because that's how we do it and we've been commissioned to do something by God. So welcome, welcome on. March 3rd is the breakfast. The date is to be announced. Um, and I think that's it. We're on day 18, which means I have 12 days left. My husband cannot wait. Um, he was saying tonight, you, you know, basically we out at this, um, what they call it, the, the hour where people go to get the discount meal. We didn't get a discount meal, but we was out at that hour. Um early bird we were out at the early bird out at, we were hitting the road by five so we can be back in by eight for my little three-hour date but maybe we'll have a movie or something together after this amen welcome 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 
So we are at the point now, we've been dealing for all of these days, these couple of weeks, we have been dealing with um, the rejected personality and all that goes along with it. My God, all that goes along with it. And we've turned a very important corner where we have turned to um, the subject now when the rejected personality has gone on and suffered so many other hits from the trauma of rejection that we um, found out that this is the point now when um, demonic oppression or demonic demonization can actually happen to you. After your soul has suffered many hits that we call trauma, um, and it can be physically, car accidents, physical abuse, um, but mainly I've been dealing with the part that is um, strong emotional abuse. Hits of the soul, strong emotional abuse. So um, we've turned the corner, like I said, and we've made it all the way to um, clusters and spirits. And we kind of know those words now. They should be familiar to you. Are they familiar to you? Are these words familiar to you? Some of the things that actually occur in the rejected personality that um, shows up because of witchcraft. Witchcraft actually, th these, um, these behaviors in your life actually promote the enemy for coming in and, and destroying your life, taking over your life and then destroying your life. So once you deal with the rejected personality, come on, y'all know all the place we go to. Rejection, the sense of being unwanted. The sense of being unwanted but really wanting to be loved, but already convinced in your heart that no one does. So there's defense mechanisms for someone who thinks like that. They have some strongholds on their life. Awesome. Someone said he's really delivering me. Awesome. There's defense mechanisms that comes with this personality. There's strongholds. There's different forms of rejection. There's different ways and different times that rejection can enter your life. It can enter your life when you're in your mother's womb. It can enter your life as a young child. It can enter your life as an adult through um, divorce, death, disease, um, illness, all of those. So many. And then when it goes on so long and you're not healed, you haven't spoken to anyone, you have not been delivered and set free from this, then all different type of personality types come in. You can become um, martyrdom, um, overbearing. You can become a pulse, um, compulsive and end up with OCD. Um, you have a lot of fears. You have strong fears. You have extreme fears. You have paranoia. Amen. Remember, y'all? Megalomania. Remember that? The obsession for the grandiose things or grandiose actions. Um, you become obsessive with power. You end up being unstable, indecisive, where you think you are humble, but you're actually passive. Um, we talked about the dangers of passivity. We, we, we worked our way all the way into rejection and the criminal mind. We talked about um, schizophrenia. Ooh, we did a lot, a lot of work. Do y'all feel it? We talked about how to recognize it. And then we moved in to when the rejected personality has now allowed um, demonic entities to begin to harass their outside man or to fill the emptiness on the inside of the man. And it came in. We learned that the spirit of rebellion is actually witchcraft. According to 1 Samuel 15 and 23. Witchcraft is actually rebellion. Mm, very good. Minister. Somebody said they're ministering already. Um, stubbornness is equal to idolatry and iniquity. Very dangerous things. And that's when your personality actually begins now to take on um, oppressive spirits. We call them unclean spirits. Um, then you are usually walking heavy in rebellion and that's when the enemy gets to have his way on your life. Because when you're walking in rebellion, you begin to believe that no one's going to tell you what to do. This is how you do it. And no pastor, no teacher, no boss, no husband, no girlfriend, no one's going to tell you what to do. Not knowing that you are now opening the door for witchcraft in your life. God has set up in the earth divine order and everyone in the earth is to report to someone. There should always be a covering over your life. If you're a child, if you're a wife, 
if you're uh, um, um, a, a member, if you are a child of Christ, everyone should have someone over them as a covering, as a place of accountability. And when you don't have that, we act like children of the world. We act like children of the dark. We are rebellious children. And rebellion is equal to witchcraft. And stubbornness is seen as idolatry and iniquity. So when we have the rejection personality, we live in rebellion and disobedience. That is the core. The root, if we were talking, if we were painting a tree here tonight, the roots in the ground would be rejection. The, the trunk of the tree would be rebellion and disobedience. And all the leaves on the tree would be all those things that I named and so many more that I don't have the time to go over on tonight. We learned about what the word cluster means. We learned about related spirits that enter in from the rejected personality. We learned that we have to learn to be people who yield to God, yield to the moving of the Holy Ghost, yielding. Yielding means to give way without force or argument, to yield. You give way to God or to your leaders or whomever it is you're submitted to. There's no top man. Even Christ was submitted to God. That's what he told us when he was on the earth. Now he's in his heavenly place and he sits at the right hand of God. But every single person, even in the heavens, they have their order and their structure. And even the enemy that we may not believe in operates in order and structure. So when you are rebellious, you are totally, completely renegade. You have no covering. So who's covering you if you are a rebel? Rebels are on their own, and they brag about it, not knowing how foolish that really is. You end up in um, narcissism, selfishness, delusion. Woo, Jesus. You end up in um, control and possessiveness. You end up in bitterness. You end up in strife. Then we made our way to Matthew 12 and 45. And um, matter of fact, we can read that for the sake of our scripture that we will open up on tonight. Matthew 12 and 45. Ooh, I did a lot of work here. Nope, that's not it either. Matthew 12 and 45. Wow, I did a lot of scriptures. Matthew 12 and 45. Go ahead, Carmen Jones. You get the sticker tonight. Matthew 12 and um, Matthew 12, 43 through 45. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. And then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. Matthew 12, 43 and 45. And from those two verses, um, three verses, we learn that out of a man tells us that spirits are and can and should be and will be cast out. Out of a man means we have the authority to cast out. Unclean spirit means demonic spirit. We also learned that when the, the scripture teaches us that the spirit shall return to his house means that once a demon has left either by two ways only, by God's doing or by um, God's authorized representative, the only way that these demons are going to leave, they never, ever, ever leave on their own. It will be by God's doing or it will be um, by God's hired authority. So we learn that our body, our soul, represents the house. That's the part of us that the enemy can possess. It's called the house, and that is actually the person's soul. We learn that the enemies will do period check-ins to find out if the house is in a, in a state where it is empty, not filled with God's presence, and they are able to come back and fill um, that, that house, that man or that woman, that house. Demons cannot just enter because they want to. They have to have legal right, which is what our topic is going to be about tonight. We're going to talk about legal rights. And the legal rights that they are allowed to have is sin or on request from the house owner or upon request of the house owner. Um, some common door openers was drugs, abusive alcohol, occult activity, satanic worship, even Ouija boards, and definitely the New Age movement. We learned about the word empty. 
That means someone who is not spirit filled and also someone who is not continuously growing in the things of your converted life in the things of God. We learned about the word um, order. And that means that the enemies also operate on levels. They operate on um, protocol, order, and procedures. Their houses run very tight shipped and things get done in his kingdom. Hallelujah. Help us, Jesus. That's why we need you, deliverance ministers, or at least people who can take those through deliverance. And we learned of the last couple of nights, at least find a deliverance minister to get someone through if you're not able to do it and if they're not able to do self-deliverance. We learned that there's always one chief demon, that there's always at least one chief demon, and there's cluster demons underneath. And the word cluster, do you all remember the word cluster? I think I saw it on the screen a few times already. The word cluster, remember? It was a group. Come on, let me hear you. Come on, let me see ya. Where are you at with my word? Cluster. Demons have legal rights, absolutely. See, this order was set in place before we even came on the earth. So we don't have to believe it if we don't want to, but it does not mean that it is not true. It is absolutely true, and they operate in complete order. Cluster, anybody going to tell me? Group of demons, group of similar or like things. Very, very good. Cluster, a number of similar things that occur together. A number of similar things that occur together. I love y'all note keeping. Y'all get an A. Go ahead and give you, yourself an A on that. That was excellent. Hello, Joel. Um, we talked about Jesus is, Jesus is the firm authority. There is no other authority given in heaven or in earth. Um, then the name Jesus, we are baptized into identification of Jesus. Therefore, the same power that is on him is the same power that is on you. And he said, greater work shall thee do. So you need to know who you are, be confident in who you are. And when fright and fear and all those things that are of the flesh and not of your spirit, man tries to come at you, you stand in your identification of Jesus Christ. Remember, it is not you that is taking this person through deliverance, but it is the Holy Spirit that is God's spirit inside of you that is actually taking this person through deliverance. So there's no reason to fear, no reason to shudder, no reason to back down, even though I will admit to you that there are um, many times that you will jump into fear, but there's no reason to fear at all. You are adopted in and you have been given legal right to operate in your capacity and mantle, period. Then you have been baptized in by identification. You have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You have been baptized in. You have been sealed with your authority, your apostolic authority, your apostolic assignment. Now go ye and make some disciples. Baptize them in, them in the name of Jesus Break people free from other gods and other religions. Break that mindset off of their life. Convert them from the old cultures and the cultures of the world and of their families and convert them into Christ. Put them in right standing in Christ Jesus that they may go and set others free. Last night I gave 25 biblical verses that substantiate the fact that Jesus encountered demons. De uh, Jesus cast out demons. Jesus healed people. These are all part of his ministry. And how many churches in the earth today do not operate in casting out demons, healing the sick? We don't even take time in our services to do this. And I, I, I admire Apostle Bill who told me before that he travels all across the, the country and beyond. He really, really does. Honestly, he doesn't have a church per se that locked him in. He's like Apostle Paul. And he travels all around constantly. Every single week he's in a different place. And he said that he's noticing that God is changing the order of services. That praise and worship isn't lasting an hour anymore. And um, um, preaching isn't as, as lasting an hour anymore. There'll be praise and worship. 
and then there'll be a flow moving of the Holy Spirit and the word of prophecy will become to begin to move forth. And then prophecy will kind of, you can just feel like a, the, the streams and the water is flowing and then praise and worship may come in with a prophetic song now. He said, and then word of knowledge are coming out. Healing and deliverances are coming out. Casting out of demons are coming out. More prophetic word is coming out. Then someone would open up the word of God and teach what the Lord is saying through his word and then church is dismissed. He said he's seeing a revolution around around the world where it's not the same old template. It's not the same old um, religious uh, traditions that's going on in service, but God is interfering and he is bringing prophetic comfort and prophetic instruction and insight and direction. And he's bringing healing and deliverance in the place. And because we don't make a show about it, come on, if you've been in my teaching, we do not make a show about deliverance. You can have it as part of the service. Last week, I just began to say, lift your hand that God wants to move in this place. And I began to call out certain things and you could hear people breaking through, getting freedom. People came to the altar and laid out just by moving. I didn't have to spit on my hands and rub it on anybody. God's hand began to move throughout that sanctuary and people had begun to receive him who does the deliverance after all, whose name all of this glory belongs to. He moved in his sanctuary. So I thank God for what he's doing in us and teaching us and that we are able to teach you all who are in here tonight and through these days with us. So thank you and God bless you. And we do thank God for tradition. We need the, the foundation of tradition, but come on, God is doing a new thing in the earth and we've got to be advancing in the new thing. When I gave the 25 verses last night, I mentioned that we're going to stick with biblical words and one of the topic words that came up was exorcism. I took some time Last night, and I looked up exorcism, and there is actually one scripture that exorcism is in, and it is happens to be in the book of Acts. It doesn't look like I wrote it down here, but exorcism is in the Bible, and it is in the book of Acts, and it may be 19 and 12. Um, and I want to get back to that because if I ever say anything that um, I research and find to be untruth, I am not... Um, into in a place where I'm not able to come back and say, "Ooh, guess what? I found something out because I study. When you study, you will always find out deeper depths and greater understanding to what God is doing. So it wasn't 19 and 12. Let's see if it's Acts 5 and 16. You all have your Bibles out? Come on, if you go to church with me, you know that I'm big when you have in your Bibles. I think it is this one in 5 and 16, but I had to read it in the King James Version. Come on, get out your King James Version. Acts 5 and 16. Let's see what we find here. It wasn't in my Hebrew Bible, but Acts 5 and 16. Nope, so it's not that one either. So let's try one more. Acts 16 and 17. I know it's in the book of Acts and I wrote it down somewhere, but I don't see it here. Nope, it's not that one either. The last one that I have written down here is Acts 19 and uh huh, there we go. Acts 19, 13 through 16. There we go. Acts 19, 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. That's Acts, what did I say, 19 and 13? Let me read it in the Hebrew word that breaks the, he the uh, King James down into the closest format from Hebrew to English. Acts 19, 13 through 16, and the word of God says, a team of Jews, and we learn that deliverance, you move in teams, a team of Jews who were traveling from town to town, casting out evil spirits. So that's where um, especially Catholicism, they get the word exorcist from. A team of Jews who were traveling from town to town, casting out evil spirits, tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus. The incantation they used was this. I command you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches, to come out. And the seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. But when they tried it on a man possessed by an evil spirit, the spirit replied, I know Jesus 
and I know Paul, but who are you? And he leaped on them and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and badly injured. So see, they weren't even moving in um, deliverance ministry anyway. They weren't even real. The scripture even says, um, um, this is the part that really got me. I know Jesus, I know Paul, and he leaped on them. Let me go up a little bit more. Here we go. Um, the incantation was this. I command you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Isn't that a sign right there that these men were not of Christ? I command you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And I bet you, I'm not going to say it's the word of God, but I bet you that these guys have been going around, these team of Jews who the King James referred to them as exorcists, I bet you they had gone around to churches, laying hands and got everybody bucking and booing and bucking and shaking and falling all over the place. And they kept saying, I command you. And then they came across one. What does the word of God say? That they went around town casting out evil spirits. Try to use the name of the Lord Jesus. The incantation that they use is, I command you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches, to come out. But when they tried it, listen, but when they tried it on a man possessed by an evil spirit. So what does that tell you? They have been going around town, probably running a holy revival, signing books and carrying their business cards on them. Casting out spirits on people who just had personality issues and not demonic issues or either had demonic issues and the demons played right along with them on their fake exorcisms. And they finally, what does it say in verse 15? But when they tried it on a man possessed, which would kind of tell me, not the word, I haven't studied it in my Hebrew and Greek yet, haven't looked in my Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, but it looks like to me, but when they tried it on a man possessed... By an evil spirit, which tells me I don't know who they were dealing with before because this man was truly possessed by an evil spirit and he spoke back to them and he said, I know Jesus and I know Paul, the name you used and uh, who are you? And they went and did what they did. And that's why I say you don't stand close to them. You don't play with them. Know who you are. Know your authority. Make sure that you are baptized in him. Make sure that Christ knows you, that your name is written on him because these things don't play. So on the 25 scriptures last night, it is important for me to do this. If we, if we were in class together with uh, desk and pen, which some of y'all, I pray, are, I would give you these. So I'm going to take the time to give them to you again tonight because I like to make sure my preaching is thorough, though it is a different teaching online than it would be if we were in um, a classroom setting together. But um, I believe that y'all are doing the same thing as a classroom anyway. So with those 25 scriptures, I'd like to count the, the recounts of um, Matthew, Mark, and Luke that are, telling us, that are telling us the same story twice. Let's just make that, just make that one. That's one agreed upon statement. And I want to give you these to add to it. Acts 16 and 17. Acts 16 and 17. Come on, let me see someone put it up. Acts 16 and 17. Very good. Thank you, Minister Sheree. Acts 16 and 17, I want you to add to our scriptures. I want you to add Acts 5 and 16. Acts 5 and 16. Come on, Facebook, y'all with me? Acts 5 and 16. Good. Thank you, Hemp Care. Acts 19 and 12. Acts 19 and 12. All right. Thank you, Hemp Care. The next one, Mark 5, 1 through 5. Mark 5, 1 through 5. Y'all way back, if y'all just putting up Acts 5 and 16, we already gave you Acts 19 and 12, and now we're at Mark 5 and 15. Thank you, Hemp Care. Thank you, Mishi. Good. Acts 5, 1 through 5. Lord have mercy, Facebook. What bus is y'all on? 
Mark 5, 1 through 5. Thank you, CW. Jesus, Periscope. Can y'all slow down for them? Acts 19, 13 through 16. Come on, Facebook. I'm giving you a hard time tonight. Acts 19, 13 through 16. Acts 19, 13 through 16. All right, Andrea Allen. All right, Mishi. Let's go. Mark 1 and 27. Mark 1 and 27. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all doing good. Mark 1 and 27. I know what y'all doing, Periscope. Y'all y'all writing in your journals. Forget trying to help your brothers on the screen. Mark 1 and 27. Very good, Andrea Allen. Matthew 7 and 22. Matthew 7 and 22. All right, Mishi. Thank you. Come on, Facebook. Matthew 7 and 22. I think Facebook has a delay anyway. Very good, Andrea. Uh, Mark 6, chapter 6, verse 7. I figured, Christine. Very good. Mark 6 and 7. Chapter 6, verse 7. Okay, Tabitha, she did say Facebook is lagging. Okay, good. Now they got it. Thank you, Andrea Allen. Thank you. Um, two more. Luke 9 and 1. Luke 9 and 1. Y'all know I'm not leaving without you, so. I'm not leaving without you. Very good. Thank you. And the last one, Mark 9 and 29. So I gave you 10 more scriptures to replace those that were just recounts of the same story about Beelzebub. So if you need the other 25, please watch last night and we're able to move on. We dealt with... Um, Signs of demonization. We talked about someone being oppressed. That's considered basic demonic manifestations. Um, we talked about things to look for in the person. And we gave 30 different basic demonic manifestations. I don't even like to use the word basic, but that's how we're taught. So that's how we're taught. Basic demonic demonization. And um, I gave you all a real heartfelt plea from the Lord to study it, take it serious, and be serious about deliverance ministry and helping people um, get free. And then I said we're going to deal with the deliverance system, and we're going to deal with dealing with the legal rights of demons. Dealing with the legal rights of demons. So let's go. The bottom line is demons cannot enter into a person's body without having some kind of legal permission and legal right to be able to do so. I believe that our God is a God of perfect order and reasoning. Anyone else? I believe that our God is a God of perfect order and reasoning. And if demons are able to get on the inside of a person's body, then there has to be some kind of specific reasons that has allowed this to occur within them. Otherwise, we would all be having demons living on the inside of us 24-7 if it wasn't a legal permission that they had to get, we would all have demons living on the inside of us 24 seven. Thank you, Maria, for the super heart. They need some kind of entry point to be able to get in and attach to someone. And that entry point will be what we call a door opener. So there's four words that you should have written down in our deliverance and healing dictionary that we are creating. When y'all come to my class, I'm going to pass out this dictionary handbook and um, y'all are going to already have these same words down because you're going to be ahead of the rest of the class.
because you spent 30 days with me. The first one is um, legal permission. Legal permission. That's right, Hamp Care. Ooh, I feel prophetic flow in this place here tonight. So the first word that you should have down is legal permission. What is legal permission? You have an idea, but we'll deal with that. The next word you should have written down is legal right. Legal right. This is going to go in our book with clusters and unclean spirits and yep. The next word you should have down is entry point. Entry point. Very good. And the next word you should have is door opener. Door opener. Go ahead, Andrea. You are on it tonight. Awesome. There are spiritual laws that are in operation in our world. And even demons have to abide by these spiritual laws that have been set up by God. The Bible tells us in Revelation 3 and 20, Revelation 3 and 20, that Jesus himself will stand before us and knock on our doors to see if we will be willing to open up that door and allow him to come into our lives. The key word that I want us to focus on there is willing. To see if we will be willing to open up the door and allow him to come into our lives. In order to have Jesus come into our lives, we first have to be willing to give him our direct permission. That's another one you can write down for our dictionary. Direct permission. Yes, yes, yes. Direct permission. Very good. We would have to, we first have to be willing to give him our direct permission to be able to do so. I do it every day. I do it every day. Direct permission. He will let us know that he will want to come into our lives and that he will always be knocking on our doors. But we will always be the ones who will decide whether or not, hey, Bishop, whether or not we will be willing to open up that door for Jesus to be able to come in to our lives. Listen to the scripture, because I like to deal with that word willing. Willing means to have a free will. You have to will to do so. Will to do so. And the scripture that I want to read is um, the first one. That's not the first one. That was the second one. I don't think I wrote it on here, but it's Genesis. Very, very early on. Very, very early on. I think it's like Genesis 3. Go up a little bit more. Um, two scriptures. I'll give you this one now. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. And Genesis 2 and 15. Genesis 2 and 15. Through 16. <laughs> the word of God says, The Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and care for it. But the Lord God gave him this warning. He gave a warning. You may freely. That's where we get our free will from. You may freely eat any fruit in the garden. Except fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat of its fruit, you will surely die. Two things I want to bring from this text here. He said you may freely eat, which means it, it's your choice to go ahead and do it. No consequences. But he says, accept fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat of its fruit, this one has a consequence. And th this isn't the free one. This is the one that has consequences. Free means free. No consequences attached. So we have a free will. 
And then there's another will that we have that if we eat, you're going to get consequences. Stay with me. And when he said, you shall surely die, we all know that Adam and Eve lived a long, long time after that. So most of us have been taught that they died a spiritual death. What it really means in the Jewish teaching is that when they eat of its fruit, you shall become mortal. You shall become mortal. That's what it means. When you eat of its fruit, you shall surely become mortal. Mortality has an expiration date on it. So the original Hebrew text says, if you eat of its fruit, you will surely become mortal, which means when you become mortal, you are going to die a mortal death. You are going to have mortality. You're going to die. Absolutely. And that's what the, 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 the Hebrew text teaches is that what happened when they ate the fruit, they became mortal. Before that, they didn't have any mortal plans, any mortal issues any mortal desires, all that mortality of death, the time clock kicked in and was not there. So you shall surely become mortal. And that's what the teaching is in the original Hebrew text. So that's where the free will comes in. And then, you know, in the New Testament, we deal with predestined and all that, but we're not going there tonight. Deuteronomy 30 and 19 says, um, and this is the NIV version, this day, I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses, witnesses of what? Against you that I have set before you free will, life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Again, free will is given, but when free will is given, it's not given with consequences. We think when it's free will, you have a choice and you have a choice. There is a choice here, but he said, choose life so that you and your children may live. No consequences. I mean, you know, blessings, but no consequences of sin or of, of, of mortality. He said, choose you this day. I've set this before you. So we do have a will that can allow spirits to come in, to allow demons to come in. You have mortality now. Absolutely. And it's the exact same thing with demons. Demons cannot enter in on the inside of a person unless they do something specific on their end that will open up the door for them to be able to come into them. And that something specific will be their legal right. Are y'all with me? Somebody said no sound on Facebook. I think that's a personal problem. Is it? Because they've been giving me hand claps and putting my words up on the screen. So they said they can hear. How y'all doing on Periscope? Periscope is like front row. The other one's a balcony section. So we got to take care of all our family here. Can y'all hear me all right? We doing okay? Thumbs up on, on Facebook? Great. Periscope is doing great. Okay, that's what I thought. I've been seeing y'all put my words up all night. So, for instance, if someone starts doing heavy drugs or starts to dabble in some area of the occult and they do not pull out of it within a reasonable length of time, that person's door then can be opened as a result of a hole now occurring in their protective hedge from the Lord. Now, I just said a lot right there. This is what I want you to get out of it. There are times where someone has done drugs one time and have been bound for the rest of their life. And then there's some that have done drugs a few times before anything ever happened to them. So I don't want you to think, well, I did that. Nothing happened to me. Or if I'm going to do it, nothing's, thank you, Facebook. Nothing's going to happen to me. I want you to understand how this demon that is against your soul, that's this demon that made you mortal because he knew the power that was invested in you. He couldn't afford to you to be heirs of God like Adam and Eve had originally had for us. He needed for us to become mortal so he can have an expiration date on us. This is what he tricks you with. There are some people that will, will, will have sex, commit fornication and adultery, and nothing ever happened to them. That's the trick of the enemy. You ever heard of three's a charm? 
not necessarily the number three, but he will allow you to choose and do something long enough to get hooked. Let lust have its way. So someone else could go out and hit a pipe one time and that demon came in, boom, and took over the rest of their entire life. And then there's others that go out they smoke crack, they sleep around, they, they dibble and dabble in the occult, they go to church on Sunday, and when God don't give them what they want fast enough, they go home and do their necromancing, and they'll go home and do their water witching, and they'll go get their little chicken heads, and they'll go work their own little magic, but they still come into church. They, they think they still love God, <laughs> but he said their hearts are far from me. In their heads, in their minds, they think they still love God. So they think it's okay to play back and forth. And some people would do this for two or three times. Some would do it for two or three years. And because we've seen these people, like we know this is the main fornicator in the church. This is the main thief in the church. This is the liar. This is the backstabber. This is the drug addict in the church. And man, these folks keep doing it. Nothing don't happen to them. So I can go ahead and do what I want to do because I'm not doing anything as bad as them. This demon will set you up to let you do something for a long time so he can get you to make a habit out of what he's setting the table for for you. And once he makes something a habit for you, all he got to do now is call you in by the darkness of your sin and he's got you. Do not think because someone didn't get caught up the first two or three times that you can do the same thing. It's not worth the gamble. Somebody said it's a Russian roulette with their soul. It is not worth the gamble. Some people, he'll just let you keep going till three is a charm, whatever number three is, whether it's number one or number eight or one year or three years, but don't play with that demon because he's not coming to take a part of you or a piece of you or to have you only on Sundays. He's coming to kill steal and destroy and he doesn't care if he kills your name destroys your reputation removes you from your family causes you to lose your inheritance he will do whatever it takes to make you become mortal that's his whole goal is to take you out of your spirituality and bring you back to your mortality come on debbie that's his whole goal. If he can get you to not believe in your inheritance, he's just made you mortal. If he can get you to believe that demons don't exist, that you don't have an enemy, that all that stuff is just too deep and too crazy, he has stolen and made you, more t made you mortal again. If he can get you to believe that that's for everybody else to do, he's made you mortal again. Whenever you retort to carnal thinking and carnal living, Satan's curse from Adam and Eve in the garden has just manifested again in your life because he's made you mortal again. Come on, are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Oh, we can go in tonight how he, Jesus made captivity captive. We can go into it. But every time we get reset back to our fallen nature, when we allow Satan to make us mortal again, too bad if they tell you you're too deep, they're too mortal. Too bad if they tell you don't take all that. They're going to come to you when they need all that. They're too mortal. They are walking in their mortality and you got to walk by the spirit, be about the spirit and function as spiritual beings because you were a spirit being before you were a mortal being. We just spent so much time being mortal and carnal. We think like the world. We act like the world. We dress like the world. We taste like the world. We make excuses to fit into the world. Raise the standard. Raise the bar. Let the world want to come into us. Let me keep going. And this door will now allow the demons to be able to come into the person's life. And from there, they will even try to get on the inside of that person's body if they can go that far with it. Or they will try and attach to them from the outside where they will then follow them around like a dark cloud trying to attack them as often as they can from an outside position. Doing any type of heavy drugs or dabbling with any area of the occult can give demons the full legal right to be able to become directly after us. And that is whether we like it or not. It is whether we believe it or not. It is so. And this was set in order with the foundations of the world. Before the people who are telling you this stuff isn't true and it's not necessary and it's too deep and they bugged out and they looking for new doctrine. It was here before we were, meaning this generation. 
When demons enter in on the inside of a person's body, they need something specific to feed on. We'll just use the word feed on for tonight. They need something specific to feed on. Come on, Montre. If a person is doing heavy drugs, then what the demons are feeding on is that person's heavy drug use. If someone is dabbling into witchcraft, then what the demons are feeding on is that person's actual activities in witchcraft. Deliverance Minister Charles Kraft, K-R-A-F-T, Charles Kraft, in his excellent book, Defeating Dark Angels, says that demons are like rats. And they need garbage to feed on. If you are doing drugs, then the garbage the demons are feeding on is the actual drug usage. And in order to be able to get set free from the demons, you first have to be willing to get rid of the garbage they are feeding on. This means that the person who is doing drugs first has to be willing to give up the drugs. Number one in deliverance. That's why we say you have to be um, forgiven or offer forgiveness. You have to forgive yourself and be willing to give up the drugs. If you are not willing to give up the drugs, every time life gets bad, every time somebody tells you no, every time you feel defeated, your, your self-esteem feels low, you feel like somebody's controlling you, so now you're going to go out and get high because can't nobody tell you what to do? Guess what, my brother? Guess what, my sister? This is more than the rebellion that you walk in that you think you are proud of. You are giving an open door and legal right for enemies that you cannot see, especially when you're high to have legal right and power over you and they will use that power to exercise every right that you have so if you're a preacher they're gonna preach with you preacher if you're a musician they're gonna play with you musician if you're a teacher they're gonna teach right along with you they're going to use the gift that is inside of you to function demonically in god's kingdom and god's not gonna have that for long before they can get rid of the demons, they've got to be willing to give up the drugs. Then they will not be able to get rid of the demons who are attached to them if they refuse to give up the drugs. Yes, Charles Kraft's book is talking about dark angels. I saw somebody quote it. I want to have you quote it right. Whew. He's a good, good father. I don't even know what else to say about him. Charles Kraft's book. Defeating Dark Angels, Charles Kraft's book, Defeating Dark Angels. And he says to think of them like rats that feed on garbage. So what is the garbage that you are feeding them? In order for this person to be able to be set free, fully free from the demons who are attached to them, they have to be willing to go before the Lord in sincere and heartfelt prayer and confess out their drug uses as a direct sin before God. That's when you have now entered into deliverance. That's your first step right there. The person has to be willing to go before the Lord in sincere and heartfelt prayer and confess that drug usage is a direct sin against God. Confession is the first one. They have to confess their sins before God. And I have a lot of people that will call me struggling because they don't want to share their sins with anyone else. They don't trust anyone else. And they struggle to share it with me. But you know who they will not share it with? Is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. As if he does not already know. As, as if there's some veil still and they're on the other side doing their drugs, committing their adultery and God just turns a blind eye and has no idea what's going on in the earth. How can you get to a place where you're not willing to confess to God? I just feel he sees everything I do. So sometimes the shame hits me so quick. I got to confess. Now I'm not perfect. But I have to confess so that the shame will lift off me. I can't have the enemy using shame on me. I've got to preach. I've got to teach. I've got to move before God. I've got to love his people. I can't be caught up in shame. Come on, Sharita. 
I bind that sickness in the name of Jesus. And I lose healing and wholeness in you. I ask that the Holy Spirit begin to move right now in you, Sharita, and to, to boost up your immune system by the power and the authority that comes through his Holy Ghost, through my identification that I uphold with Jesus Christ, that through this word and his preaching tonight, that you will be empowered and you will resurrect tonight and sickness and flu will not be your portion in Jesus name. Amen. The first step in deliverance, we're going to get to the first step, but I'm giving you a little cheat sheet right now. They have to be willing to go before the Lord in sincere and heartfelt prayer and confess out their drug uses as a direct sin before God. It's a sin before God, before it's a sin before you, before it's a sin before your family, your mother, anybody else who's mad and says, how can you hurt me? How can you ruin our name? It is a sin before God, before it is anyone else, because he made you and he had the audacity to make you in his image and his likeness. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he's invested in you. That's how much he is your creator. Before you or anybody else, sympathy, explanation, repentance, or confession, you need to confess first to the Lord. And when they cannot confess to the Lord because they don't want to hear themselves saying it, you cannot take them any further on. You cannot. And then step two, they must be willing to repent and renounce the sin. Number two, repent and renounce. Confess, number one. Number two, repent and renounce. Telling God that they will never go back to it again. And I'm telling you the truth. Most people cannot get past step one. Step two, you see another one fall. They are afraid. Sin has gotten such a grip on them that they are afraid to say, I won't do it again because they're saying it with one eye open and on the other eye, they're looking at me. But what if I do? That's not even something you should be thinking about if these demons have been stealing and wrecking havoc and destroying your life. But that person still under that spirit will begin to say, instead of saying, what must I do to be saved? They're like, I don't know if I can make that confession. Can you believe it? That's why we need counselors. They need counselors. They need to understand the manifestation of sin. They need to understand what it does to your family, what it still kills and destroys. We need to make it real to them. So by the time, if it's one of those cases, that now they go to the deliverance minister, they have a true understanding of that sin, of that crime that they've committed, and they hate it as much as Christ hated it, so that they'll never go back to it again. But the problem is we enjoy our sin too much. And that's why I appreciate that it was good that I was afflicted, that I've learned to hate the sin that I used to love when I fell in love with God and I fell out of love with sin. Once that person fully confesses and fully repents of their sin before the Lord, then the demons will no longer have any more legal rights to be able to stay attached to that person. And they will then have to leave this person once you start commanding them to leave this person alone. So then the next step is commanding the spirits to leave this person alone. Mm -hmm. Start commanding them to leave this person alone. The garbage will then have been fully removed and they will have nothing else left to be able to feed from or hang on to. Here, I'm going to give you 13 specific areas that will give demons full legal right to be able to come directly after someone if they happen to fall into any of these specific areas for any extended length of time. You see, I said any extended length of time. Because some people think because it didn't get them the first time that they can go back and do it again. And then lust will have its perfect way. Each of these specific areas are major door openers for demons. If a person does not pull out of it within a reasonable period of time, they can come become demonized. If a person does not pull out of these specific areas, I'm just going to give you 13, within a reasonable period of time, they can become demonically possessed and of course we don't have time tonight to go through the 13 so what do I want to do 
Nope, I'll wait. Tomorrow I'll name the 13 and then we'll go in. I think we're going to go in on just one. And then we will, um, we will, after that one, we are going to do a deliverance. We're going to do a deliverance. Not on an actual person, but just some of the verbiage and wording that you must use. So how are you tonight? You good? Did somebody say, oh man, <laughs> it's getting late. Dang, somebody else is saying dang. We can go to 1030. <laughs> Woo! In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Come on. You remember that one? How old is that one? I told Satan, get thee behind. You singing with me? Come on, everybody sing it in the house. Cannot wait for tomorrow night. Beautiful. We have the victory. We have the victory. Come on, Nakia. We can't have these long days when we need this to save our life. Hallelujah. It is old, Caritha. I learned that with you. <laughs> I told Satan to get thee behind. We have the victory. All right, somebody else said, victory today is mine. Glory. You remember that. When he starts harassing you, you remind him. I told Satan, get thee behind. We have the victory. I can't sing, but I will sing to the Lord no matter what. <laughs> Somebody else saying, push it till 1030. Nope, I've got your palate nice and wet. You've tasted the cheese and you've tasted the cracker. Now tomorrow you're going to have the salad and you will have the meal. <laughs> Bless y'all. I love you so much. All right, come on. We up here singing tonight. Go ahead, Nakia. In the name of Jesus. Somebody was saying, get thee behind. Yes, it is setting us free. I'm on fire. I'm ready to just do what he's called me to do in his church. Um, um, I understand that criticism is for our good. So I'm not going to be stopped or nervous. If somebody feels like I'm stepping on their toes, I'm going to go forth, put my hands to the plow and plow through in Jesus name. And I pray that y'all are plowing through with me. What is that? Minister Joy. All right. We're going home. This is it. So 13 tomorrow night. Make room in your notebook. 13 tomorrow. And these are specific areas that demons will use to come in your life. Some of them we already talked about. And then we're going to talk about um, the steps of deliverance. Not, not preparation, but the actual deliverance. So thank you for your time. Thank you for being on here with me tonight. I love you. God bless you. Father, I pray that you watch between us. I pray that your blood covering that be upon us to anoint us, um, to atone for us for every sin that was committed. I pray for your anointing to be upon us that breaks every yoke. I pray that that we walk in our supernatural divine favor, which is our inheritance. I pray that we continue to eat the bread, which is the deliverance and healing of your children. I pray, Father, that we not be afraid of the enemy, but we understand that victory is ours, that we tell Satan to get thee behind, that we stand on the word of God, that we set our neighbors free, we set those that are captive free, and we, not, we don't be afraid or lacking in confidence to do what you've called us to do. We will be a nation, a generation that would not be afraid to set God's people free. God bless you. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow night. Above all things, I pray that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Have a blessed night. Don't do anything crazy and wicked. Don't set yourself back tonight. Stay in power and authority tonight. Be lovers of the law so that God could rest, rule, and reign, and, and reign and abide through you and everything that you do will be blessed. God bless you and thank you. Good night.